Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the regular meeting of the City Planning Commission. Today is Monday, May 22nd. My name is Alyssa Olson. I'm the president of the Planning Commission. The city will be recording and posting this meeting to the city's website and YouTube channel, channel as a means of increasing public access and transparency. This meeting is public and subject to the Minnesota Open Meeting Law. At this time, I will ask the clerk to please call the roll to verify a quorum. Uh, Commissioner Ford will be absent this evening. Commissioner Alper. Present. Commissioner Baxley. Here. Commissioner Campbell. Here. Commissioner Conley is absent. Commissioner Kofsky. Present. Commissioner Marwa is absent. Commissioner Meyer. Here. And Chair Olson. We have six members present. All right, we have a quorum. So with that, we'll proceed to the agenda, a copy of which was posted for public, public access to the city's legislative information management system, which is available at limbs.minneapolismn.gov, as well as on the counter by the clerk over there. We will begin with acceptance of the minutes from May 22nd, 2023. That must be wrong. <laughs> May 8th. Um, Chair, I have May 8th and May 11th, which was the, the Thursday meeting with Click. Okay. Is that what you have? I, I'm just, I'm on the script and that's oh, probably I, just my right. apologies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we will begin with acceptance of the minutes from May 8th and May 11th. Could I have a motion to accept those minutes? So move. approval. Is there a second? Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that motion passes. The minutes are adopted. Our next order of business is to organize the public hearing agenda. I'll read through the agenda items and numbers and state whether they're slated for consent or discussion. Consent items will be passed by the board uh, without discussion. We'll be adopting the staff recommendation on those items. Um, dis discussion items will be um, discussed by the board and we'll take public testimony uh, before deliberating on those. So if you agree with staff recommendation, you don't need to do anything and we'll um, adopt staff recommendation. If you disagree with the staff recommendation, you can indicate um, that you would like to speak on the item by just raising your hand and we'll put that item on our discussion agenda. You will, if you do um, speak on an item, you'll have two minutes to speak on that item, so um, prepare your comments accordingly. So with that, we have the following items on the agenda this evening. Item number four is 3020 and 3024 6th Street North, and 409, 419, 427, and 429 31st Street North. Staff is recommending this item for consent is there anyone here to speak against staff recommendation on item number four? Seeing none, we'll put item number four on consent. Item number five is 1011 and 1025 Portland Ave. Uh, we will be discussing this item. So we'll put item number five on discussion. And item number six is 2800, 2804, 2808, and 2812 27th Avenue South. Staff is recommending this item for consent. Is there anyone here to speak against staff recommendation for item number six? All right, we'll put item number six on our discussion agenda. So we have item four on consent and we will discuss items five and six. Could, commissioners, could I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that motion passes and the agenda has been adopted. We will uh, handle our public hearing agenda in this order. First, I will open the public hearing for our consent items and we'll approve those items. After we've dealt with those items, we can proceed to our uh, two discussion items. So uh, now I will open the public hearing on the consent item, which is item number four. Uh, is there anyone here who would like to speak on item number four? If so, you can come to the podium, uh, state your name and address for the record, and proceed with your comments. 
All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing for item number four, uh, the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt item number four? So, so moved. Second. All right, we have, have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that uh, motion passes. So um, if you're here for item number four, that item has been approved. All right, we'll now move on to our two discussion items. We will um, take public testimony, deliberate on, and then make decision on these items. After the public testimony has been heard for each discussion item, I will close the public hearing for that item. Once I close the public hearing for an item, no additional public testimony can be taken. However, staff may still be asked to address board questions. Um, and again, we'll be limiting public comments to two minutes, so um, prepare your comments for that. And our first item is item number five, and staff is Mailing Smith. Good evening, commissioners. I'm Aileen Smith. Sorry about that. So this subject site is 1011 1025 Portland Avenue, and this is a project that you've seen before at the Planning Commission just a few months ago in February. Um, you approved a conditional use permit for a board and care home to allow the conversion of 10 of their bedrooms to allow for a clinically monitored withdrawal management facility. Um, so this is a site that has two parcels um, combined, and it's in the R6 multiple family district. Um, the applicant is coming before you today because they wish to amend one of the conditions of approval from February. Um, they would like to, so one of the conditions was to fully enclose on all four sides the two um, receptacles that you see here. Um, and the applicant has been working with the garbage hauler and recycling um, hauler to see how this would be possible um, to accommodate a front-loading truck, which is what is needed for these types of bins. Um, and the bins do serve both this site and also an adjacent property that RS Eden operates. And the applicant has stated that it's not possible for them to um, accommodate that condition of approval. So, um, so they're, they are proposing a site plan. Uh, oh, sorry, let me just show you this. This is the area where the trash bins are facing Grant Street. The site plan here shows that they would be improving upon existing site conditions. They would have an enclosure on the three sides, and they'd tuck one of them back, um, so it'd be behind the alley. Um, but it would still be open to Grant Street to allow the trash hauler to enter from that side. Um, staff is recommending denial of the variance application. Um, to re reduce the street screening requirements for the trash receptacles, we wish to see it fully enclosed on all four sides. And the findings are found in your packets. Um, in summary, there are other options available to accommodate the garbage haulers' maneuvering needs considering the large size of the site because it does include that surface parking area. Um, and it also does not meet the intent of the ordinance. The trash bin would be directly visible from Grant Street um, and that's where this, the street and sidewalk are, and this is not in, in keeping with the intent of the ordinance. And that concludes my presentation. I know that the applicant has more to say, and I will uh, stand for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mei Ling. Commissioners, any questions for staff? I'm not seeing any, thank you. Um, so now we will uh, open the public hearing. Is the applicant here to speak on this item? You can come forward now and um, go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Caroline Hood and I'm president and CEO of RS Eden. As uh, staff indicated in February, this commission approved the conditional use permit for the clinically monitored withdrawal for our 59 bed residential facility. The need for the withdrawal management programs in Minneapolis and across the nation is dire. Members of our community are overdosing and dying at never before seen rates. Overdoses that do not result in deaths are exceptionally expensive, draining our healthcare system, and mentally and emotionally traumatic to all parties. These overdoses are preventable. Um, 
RS Eden can prevent this clog up of the emergency rooms by providing this withdrawal and prevent the overdosing and the deaths. The last barrier in our ability to provide this level of care is this external trash enclosure screening. Um, I want to remind the commission that no internal structural sites had to be changed for the facility. And at this point, um, we are turning away about 60% of the referrals who come to us because their medical complexity is higher than our level of care allows us to provide. These folks are going into the emergency rooms or back to the streets. So I'm going to turn it over to Tiffany, our colleagues at LHB, who is going to dive into the practical difficulty. I just wanted to remind folks of um, the importance of what we're talking about today. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Yes, my name is Tiffany Navratil. I'm a professional landscape architect with LHB and an adjunct faculty member at the U of M. This slide here is just summarizing and reiterating what Mailing has already presented, the location of the site. And the issue here with um, trash bin location really boils down to three buckets of how we approach the site. So you can approach it off of Grant Street, you can approach it off of Portland, or you can approach it via the alleys. And then there are some existing site condition photos here of what the trash bin looks like. And they are quite close to Grant Street at this time. So the existing condition, right now if you look at how a front loading trash truck works, they need a good amount of maneuvering space in order to approach a really, really large trash bin like this head on so they can insert their forks, lift it up over its head, and then set it back down again. And then because the site requires two bins, an eight cubic yard trash bin and a four cubic yard recycling bin, it has to back up and reposition itself in order to get at that second bin. Right now, all of those trash truck maneuverings are happening on Grant Street, which is a very low traffic corridor and it is very visible from Grant Street as of right now. Um, you can see the alleyway is presenting a particular challenge here where this entire site was developed before modern zoning requirements were written. So the alley is narrower than a typical right-of-way alley. There's existing electric poles and then even more limiting is the existing overhead power line. The same condition applies to the other alley that's on the east side of 614 East Grant Street. The trash hauler has emphatically stated that they will not allow their trash trucks to drive underneath these overhead alleyways. And you can see the dashed lines on either side of the auto turd representation of how much space the truck takes up. There's the truck itself in solid black lines. There's the mirrors one foot away on either side. And then there's that extra wiggle room that I think we all learned this past winter is really necessary in Minnesota to plan for that extra little space because once we start having snow storage issues taken into account, it whittles away at the maneuverability of our narrow alley spaces. So this is one of the exhibits from sheet L202. It's very similar to that which is represented on L203, where if you have a truck accessing trash bins through the alley, you will hit the existing power lines and or the existing power poles and potentially the neighboring CMU wall as well. If you access something within the parking area off of Portland, here's two different iterations of where those trash bins could be located. You end up having to do all of your truck maneuvering on Portland Avenue, which is a very high traffic corridor, creating a particularly unsafe condition and vehicular collections become very likely. We would be encroaching upon the landscape improvements that are a, another requirement for the current zoning code and rezoning of the site, which undermines the spirit of that code. Um, and the trash hauler has also stated that they will not allow their trucks to drive in reverse for such a extended length of space because it exponentially increases their chances of damaging private property. The right hand image also shows a trash enclosure scenario where it's limiting the amount of truck maneuvering needs off of Portland, but it's undermining the spirit of the code requirement that states that ADA parking needs to be as close to the front door as possible. And it's also placing the smelly trash bins next to the new landscape improvements that are being required of the CUP. Finally, access off of Grant Street to fully enclose it on all four sides also presents challenges. 
Um, in order to make it so that there is a gate, it has to be facing Grant Street. Otherwise, the trash hauler will not actually be able to get the trash bins out of the enclosure. However, a gate facing Grant Street is not allowed in current zoning code. In order to make sure that the residents can open the gate, it makes the size of the enclosure so large that it now needs to encroach upon the right of way. When I spoke to Paul Miller with Public Works, he said that a small amount of encroachment would be accepted to the city, but if the gate needed to swing across the sidewalk, that would be unacceptable. That is the only condition in which the scenario on the left would work. We could also explore the option of having a sliding door, which would end up being a permanent construction that is approximately 35 feet long, that would be very fence-like and at least six feet tall, which would violate a different part of the zoning code in order to have this permanent structure in place because a sliding gate has to be necessarily engineered to be very heavy, otherwise it will fail immediately. And then we also looked at a scenario in which we're using the ramp space in the 614 East Grant Street building to put in a trash enclosure and it also creates a lot of issues with whether or not um, we're limiting access to the ADA egress on that building and or whether or not it's even viable to waterproof the building, which um, is unknown and also unlikely given the age of the building. So our proposed solution is to screen the trash bin in its existing location on three sides rather than four. So we are using Grant Street, which is still the lowest traffic corridor available to us to complete our truck maneuvers, as is the current existing condition. We're eliminating any permanent or temporary encroachments into the right of way. We're eliminating any safety conflicts with the traffic on Portland Avenue, with the utility infrastructure and with parked cars. We're eliminating any ADA conflicts, whether or not it means we're impacting the ADA egress on 614 East Grant Street or the ADA parking sp spaces for 1025 Portland. And we're still achieving the intended goal of improving the streetscaping along Portland Avenue and Grant Street. It's a very technical challenge that we are facing. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. Commissioner Campbell. So staff had earlier come up and said that, or maybe it's in the report, I can't remember where I read it or heard it, but that there, that you have not exhausted options available to you to, to find a way to fit within the code. <clears throat> I'm just, I'm asking the question as to whether or not the presentation you've given us includes all possibilities for trash removal or if there are others that are maybe too expensive or. Great question. So there are eight exhibits illustrated um, we have the proposed solution, the existing condition, and then eight iterations of what we could do in order to resolve this issue. In the variance application, there's also a narrative included um, that whether or not we use a different kind of bin. So does it need to be an eight yard cubic yard bin? Could we use three four yard cubic yard bins? Could we use 90 gallon bins that you can physically roll out by hand out to the street. So in our discussion with the trash hauler, there is a limited amount of space that you can maneuver a four cubic yard trash bin by hand until it becomes impractical to do so within a Minnesotan winter. Um, so that seems understandable. The equivalent volume of trash that would need to be included in 90 gallon ones that you can move just as a person would triple the amount of space needed to actually store all those bins. Um, it would require 24 90 gallon bins all standing outside and then somebody would have to take 24 bins out to the curb twice a week in order to achieve the same volume of trash collection, which the trash hauler also pointed out that no trash hauler in the city would accept that contract. So we've looked at how we could approach the container that they're being set in, um, and all of those solutions seem non-viable. It really boils down to now the next step would be making a major investment in site redesign in order to rearrange the existing utilities in in order to achieve this goal. So we would have to move utility poles, we would have to potentially bury overhead power lines, and instead of investing what is amounting to approximately $70,000 for the landscape improvements that the RSE has 
already committed to making along Portland, we are looking at a financial commitment of closer to $150,000 to $200,000 for landscape improvements that are not actually supporting the intended reuse of the site for elevated medical care. I can also note that the amount of time and energy it's taken just to explore these options has amounted into the thousands of dollars of range for consultancy fees, just to nurse support them in this exploration. And that number continues to grow as this conversation continues. Thank you. Commissioners, are there any other questions for the applicant? Commissioner Baxley. Thank you, and thanks for the study. I, the, I'm going back to the gate situation again so this yes in this situation the one you're presenting up on this proposed solution mm -hmm. um, a two-fold gate that could be folded against would be possible if doing like a double yeah gate like this would fold back against the but would swing out mm -hmm. but it would face grant and so the issue is I think for mailing that that's the city won't allow a gate facing a street is that the issue is that pu public works wouldn't allow the, that encroachment to swing out into the public right of way and sidewalk. For the one, for the you, for like to have it opened when I'm going to get garbage out, public works doesn't allow that to happen. That's correct. It. That's, That's my correct. understanding as well. That it would be a temporary encroachment as that door is swung open and that would be unacceptable because it's blocking the primary circulation path on public property. Well, so is the truck if it pulls up to Touché. the situation. So <laughs> how, how I, I'm not understanding Public Works' position on this. Are they here? I mean, this is, you collect, you're not collecting garbage 24 hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. So this is mm -hmm. once a week? It's um, twice a week. Twice a week. Twice a week. Um, I, I wish, can, can we take this back to the public? Like, I, it just, it's, that's, Either you have no enclosure or you accept the fact that we have a unique condition here and yes. you want closure, put a gate on it. And Yes, so you can see in this image that the building is um, set back only eight feet, seven inches from the property line. So there is a very limited amount of space to work with on the property itself before we're creating an encroachment. Um, the swinging of the gate is problematic from a public works perspective, as I've been told. Um, also, if we have a fully enclosed four-sided structure, the way that it's engineered becomes very, very critical to make sure that pedestrians can actually access it. So the heavier the gate, the less likely it is a person can just open it and throw their trash in. So that means that you now have to have internal circulation space that's at least three feet wide so a person can open a secondary person-sized door go inside and throw their trash in, which makes the enclosure three feet deeper than it used to be if you have to have that individual person access door, um, which when it's drawn this way starts to now permanently encroach into the existing sidewalk. You could That's be. illustrated on the left-hand image right here, where if you have a person door on the bottom left-hand corner of the enclosure, that extra space that you're seeing in front of those bins um, is now encroaching across the existing sidewalk. You could put a lock on the door too, right? Yes, and it would have to be electronically operated potentially. You couldn't just let anybody go in and out of there and everything. The likelihood of the structure being damaged and then inoperable and then creating it so the trash hauler cannot access those bins at all becomes much more likely if the structure becomes damaged. So the more moving parts there are, the more likely it is to become an issue long term. So our proposal is to enclose it from three sides, acknowledging the fact that it is an imperfect solution, but one that is a dramatic improvement upon its existing condition, which has been the condition for decades and has no real impact on the elevated service that they're trying to provide to community members. Are you good? I'm not good, but I'm... Yeah, okay. <laughs> Commissioner Koski. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just to maybe pile on here, Vice Chair's question, is there anybody from Public Works or can, or maybe even CPED could um, help us understand if we have this type of uh, encroachment 
in other buildings and other areas across the city right now? I mean, I'm, what I'm understanding is that what we're hearing is that twice a week, this door will swing open, the garbage trucks come, they leave. Do we have the same scenario across the city at other buildings? Um, Chair Olson and, and Commissioner Kosky, um, I don't know of other, I can't speak to other properties, but it's not allowed by city ordinance to have the outswinging doors across the public right of way. So I think the, just to clarify, I don't think that you would have the authority to override public works on that aspect of it. It would just be whether you allow to have reduced screening in this location if, if they want to place the bins right here. Um, you could also look at other options like other locations, for instance, on the site. But it's just not allowed by city ordinance to have the outswinging doors across the right of way. All right, thank you. There was an additional proposal in our variance application narrative that um, proposes that we repaint all of the bins with uh, graffiti vandal repellent paint mm -hmm. that is much easier to clean so the overall assemblage will be revived and then easier to maintain long term. Commissioner Baxley. And sorry, and the uh, ability to move that bin, so let's say the determine is the swing into the public way. That's a half the distance of the opening. You move it back that dimension. You slide everything to the right. Can't do that because is there a doorway there or something on the building that? Um, are you saying to plan right on the? Yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's that existing light pole that I highlighted in yellow. Oh. So that's something that if we leave it alone, that would be the preferred scenario. If we have to impact it and move it, that's starting to increase the cost of the project really dramatically. Yeah. Um, what you're seeing between the two sides of the building is a necessary egress courtyard mm -hmm. for the entire building. So to scoot it further to the right starts to create a limitation. Um, it's actually not one of the scenarios that I illustrated here, but I illustrated it in your packet on exhibit H on L205. If you guys have that available in front of you. I was trying to create an yep. abridged version here for you. That one, you've got three bins. Um, yes. So in this two. scenario, you would have to use three four-yard bins. Those can have wheels on them. They can be rolled a very limited distance. You have to approach the big eight-cubic-yard bin head-on. It right. cannot be wheeled. So that's what we're seeing in this scenario right here is the big one on the left does not have wheels and the truck can drive right up to it. It would back up, reposition itself ever so slightly to be facing the alley, and then the right-hand bin would be rolled off to the side and pushed toward the truck 10 feet and then flipped up over the top. To do what we're showing in Exhibit H, the truck would have to stop right where it's shown um, before it hits that existing utility pole. It just appears per your drawing here that there's plenty of room between the pole and the building to get an the there, um, so a scenario like back. this would not be able to have a, even a double swinging gate because it would hit the other building before it opened all the way on the other side of the alley. That's, um, it's not in this deck, unfortunately. It's in the original exhibits that were posted to the project. In order to draw this, if I, can you guys see my cursor right here? Yeah. There would have to be a sliding gate across all three of them the enclosure would cover up the courtyard about halfway across. Um, and then because it would have a sliding gate that a regular person would not be able to just open up and throw their trash away, it would have to have an additional person access door and the front of the enclosure would come out into the middle of the alley an additional three and a half feet or so. So it would make the alleyway unnavigable for all traffic and all emergency vehicles. Um, it would become an egress issue as people are trying to exit the courtyard. The truck can't go past this. So, and if you put part of the bins over here, that's too long of a distance to roll out and then toward the truck. So I understand all that, but if we keep with the eight and the four, and you four. slide it to the right. Do we have enough space between the pole and the building to accommodate the eight yard bin? There's a 
guy wire right here. I think I understand what you're asking me now. Yep. There's a guy wire right here that's tacking this existing light pole to the ground okay. to make sure it doesn't fall over. So this is about as far as we can make any permanent structures without impacting the structural stability of this pole. And the guy has to go in that direction. Yeah, because the overhead power lines that it's connected to are pulling it toward the right. Away. So the guy wire is trying to counteract those forces and pull it back to the left. And we've talked to the utility about other options around that guy or? The utility company is a challenge to collaborate with. Um, it is something that we can continue to pursue if necessary. However, um, our construction colleagues are just trying to give us an estimate of what that cost would be to start moving utility poles, let alone the actual like practical cooperation necessary in order to get it approved. And we're in the $150,000 range of funds that would have to be diverted from uh, community support programming. Commissioner Meyer. May Ling, can you expand on the recommendation that you made for denial, um, specifically on, um, for the first finding? So you wrote, given the large size of the site and surface parking area, there are other options available to the applicant and waste hauler to meet their maneuvering needs while also satisfying the ordinance requirements. So staff does not recommend a practical difficulty. So can, can you um, e expand on what the alternative ways would be? What you yep. Commissioner Meyer, we believe that there is a ample space in the parking lot um, and that that hasn't been, you know, there would be maybe parking spaces that would have to go away in order to accommodate maneuvering, but there is sufficient um, space on the site to accommodate this need. And would that be able to be located? So, I mean, the, the applicant had said that that could compete with ADA accessible um, spots are there could it be located elsewhere within the parking lot like I don't I don't know where on the on the diagram the ADA spots are or, or where the alternative um, locations for the garbage could be mm -hmm. is there yeah well the ex well the exercise is just you know is there space for mm -hmm. trash enclosure on the site and can it be fully screened and so that's our finding is just to be consistent with you know, our February recommendation to explore the options in the on-site parking area. Um, so we haven't come up with a design that would accommodate that, um, but, you know, we encourage applicants to provide site designs for us to react to, and so we, we feel that that would probably be the best place for it. Thank you. All right, I'm not seeing any more commissioner questions, so thank you. We are going to, can you do? You want to respond to that last? Yeah, I can just say I completely agree with what Mei-Ling just said. There is plenty of space in this parking lot for the trash enclosure. Um, it's not an issue of space, it's an issue of access. So the image on the left here is one example of where it could be located, where there's plenty of space for it, but the truck can't safely get to it. Um, the other example on the right, plenty of space for it, but it starts to impact the spirit of the code of ADA accessibility requirements, as well as the landscape improvements that we're trying to make along Portland. So plenty of space, very challenging access issues. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not seeing any more commissioner questions, so we're gonna continue with the public hearing. Is there anyone else uh, here who would like to speak on this item? If so, you can come forward now to the podium. You can state your name and neighborhood. Um, and proceed with your comments. You'll have two minutes. All right. I'm not seeing anyone, so I will close the public hearing. Um, all right, commissioners, any? Commissioner Campbell. So I'll start by saying that I think this is a really important service to provide our community. I think RS Eden has generally done amazing work in providing supporting housing for people in need, and I think this is um, a, a project that is uh, willing of or worthy of additional eyes, but one that we should consider um, 
in the vein of it being a, a valued service for those in need in our community. Um, secondly, I, I, I'd like to say that I think this is kind of one of those perfect examples of government coming in conflict with itself. And that can happen from time to time. Uh, and I think this is a good opportunity for us to apply what I like to call a human lens to what we are working through and does this pass the human lens test. And to me, this, this uh, denial of the variance does not pass that test. Um, it's my belief that the, there are practical, practical difficulties do exist on this site, that the corridor uh, access issues on Portland are, uh, is a practical difficulty that exists, that the existing city code being in conflict with itself, I think specifically of the public works um, encroachment issue, uh, as well as the, uh, the squeezing out of the, um, the ADA uh, compliant parking stalls and making an accessible city for all of our residents. Um, I think that um, in the spirit of the comp plan, this is a dramatic improvement from the prior condition and provides much needed housing in line with both number six of the Minneapolis Comprehensive Plan, uh, which is high quality physical environment, and saying this is a dramatic improvement from what we have seen before, and uh, in line with the goal number three, which is affordable and accessible housing for people in our community. I'd add that I think this is specifically also in line with policy 85, which is access and health um, for social and emergency services, in addition to policy number five, which is visual quality of new development, mentioning that this is a dramatic improvement. So I would move with those practical difficulties in mind um, and the policies identified in Minneapolis 2040 to approve the variance request for the applicant. Commissioner Baxley. Just because I agree with everything um, my fellow commissioner said, but I'd like to try to see if we can figure this out. So the, the only issue with the parking in the lot on where the ADA accessible stalls are, I'd say the client has agreed that that works great there. It's actually, it's only the issue of accessibility because those spots might have to move. Is that correct? Sorry, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Partially correct. Partially correct. Um, so one of the issues here is on the right-hand image is, yes, the ADA stalls would have to move further away from the front door, um, but also we're placing the, the smelliest piece of this site right up front next to the front door and along the high traffic corridor where the vast majority of pedestrians will be walking past. So it's not just um, an accessibility issue, it's also uh, everybody walking past the building will be experiencing the trash bins um, up close and personally. So it's more of that because you could actually yes. put the trash bins, keep the ADA there, put them on the other side uh, in the aisle. In, are you saying on the right hand side? Yeah. Right. Yes, and it would still yeah. be the same. So if we move it it's off. Just the smell though, but the ADA would be close to yes. the front door, meets all yes. those things. It's really the issue of. Right. So RS Eden is currently door. committed to spending approximately $70,000 on the landscape improvements to this parking lot, and then it would be putting a trash bin right next to, a very, very large trash bin right next to this new investment that's supposed to be improving the overall character of the streetscape. True. I'm sure it'd be a beautiful enclosure and it oh. probably wouldn't have to be three bins, right? It could be two at that point. No, it'll be three bins if it's in that location because the truck won't actually be able to pull right up in front of it. Got it. So Got it. we'll have to wheel them off to the side and toward the truck. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, we have a, oh, we do have a motion, but you're gonna second the motion? Second. <laughs> okay. okay, Commissioner Meyer. Well, I had a procedural question for the motion itself. So uh, Commissioner Campbell's motion addresses item B. Um, so my question for staff is if we want to approve item B, then um, for item A, would, would the recommendation be, then be to approve item A but strike condition eight, or, or would it be a modification of condition eight, or what is the staff recommendation if we want to adopt uh, Commissioner Campbell's motion for item B. That's correct. That's why I had put my card up, is we would need to strike that condition of approval that's asking them to comply with the refuse requirements if we want to also approve the variance. 
Uh, yeah, you, I think you can withdraw your motion. And then all we'd have to do is move to strike eight, is that right? No, no, you, your motion is good. I would just add on to it to also approve item A, except strike in condition eight. Got it. If you take that as a friendly amendment. Then. I do, I think with the conditions laid out by the applicant with like the three walled closure as currently planned and presented to the council today or to the commission. Kimberly, can I clarify, as I'm looking at the agenda, I'm not seeing a condition number eight. Um, I through the chair, I believe that's my fault with the printing. Okay. Um, the formatting issue that we frequently have transposing from limbs to mm -hmm. outlook <laughs> results in some very strange numbering, so um, yeah. apologies. So on, on our paper sheet, it, you know, it starts at number four and goes to 10. So the one that I am proposing to strike is the one that says, uh, the final site plan shall be revised to include a trash enclosure, et cetera, striking that one. Yes. Um, it's condition five in limbs. Okay. I think the fact that you read it on the record covers all of our bases, and we know which, exactly which condition you're referring to. So that works. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion, or would we like to have the clerk call the roll? Hmm? You want a review of the motion? Okay. So my motion is to. Hey, Commissioner Campbell, could you say it one more time for all of us? Oh boy! All right. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to say all year, but. Do I have to name the practical difficulties and all the other things that exist? No, no, no. Okay. No, we got that part. Um, I move to. Um, reject staff recommendation and approve the variance of the refuse screening requirements presented today to the Planning Commission by the applicant. All right, any other discussion? Yep. Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Commissioner Alper. Aye. Baxley. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Conley. Aye. Koski. Aye. Marwa. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Olson. Aye. That's eight yeas and zero nays. All right, that motion passes. Um, our final item this evening is item number six, and staff is Aaron Hanauer. Good afternoon, commissioners. So the project at 2800 27th Avenue South is a new four-story L-shaped building. Um, oops, pardon me. It's a new four-story L-shaped building that would be an emergency shelter and as well as having single room occupancy units and residential units. Um, the might use the projector here. Um, so I have the subject site here, it's the, the lots in blue, zoned I-1 along with the neighboring properties. Just a, a block or two east of the Cub Foods and Target along East Lake Street. That proposal, again, um, 50, an emergency shelter with 54 beds, 22 single room occupancy units, and 23 residential units. The proposal is to have the 11 space surface parking lot and the exterior materials being the brick, metal panel, and cement board. The applications 
that were are required for the project, the two conditional use permits to allow for the residential units and to allow for the emergency shelter, a variance to reduce the front yard setback along the south property. For the first 25 feet, um, there's the neighboring residential building to the south that is set back 19 feet from 27th Avenue. Therefore, the, the, uh, the setback would is to go to zero feet for the first 25 feet of that shared interior property line. And then site plan review. Those are the, those are the four applications. Just to touch on the variance uh, since for the front yard setback, since this is something that was not brought to you at the Planning Commission Committee of the whole meeting, um, staff found that there were practical difficulties that exist with both these properties zoned industrial and that typically not having a front yard setback such as 15 or 19 feet deep and that this setback due to the house to the south is deeper than a typical front yard setback for an industrially zoned property. In addition, the subject property is within the pedestrian oriented overlay district where you, you want to see the buildings set closer to the street. Also note that um, historically there's been a restaurant at this intersection at this corner and it's, and it's typical and common to see buildings proud at that corner um, and then the interior building set back a little bit more. So for these reasons, staff was supportive of that variance request. I provided a correction memo, um, just noting the typo that I noted that the condition or the entitlements being were meant to be good through May 22nd, 2020. 2025 and not 2023. Um, I'm not sure. I know there's a member of the public here to to speak on this. I'm not I'm sure what they would like to speak to, but I'm happy to conclude the presentation there and come back if there are questions for staff for the project. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, commissioners, are there any questions for staff? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will open the public hearing and ask the applicant to come forward if they would like to speak. Uh, I'm David Canoff. Uh, hold on one second. Are you the applicant? No. Oh, okay. Is the applicant here and do they want to come forward? We'll have them go first, unless you don't want to. I think so you were there. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioners. I'm Kyle Hansen, the Executive Director at Agate Housing and Services. And we are really excited to be bringing this project to you today. Um, it's taken a few years for us to pull together financing for um, a shelter project of this size and for the housing component. Um, as you know, our, our city uh, continues to struggle with encampments and finding uh, safe shelter, uh, especially during the cold winter months for those people who are living outside. So um, this project is an important step in that direction. We see this as a really um, fantastic way to revitalize a neighborhood that has been um, under so much stress over the last several years. And uh, we are thinking um, also that this location is really great because proximity to transit, close to um, affordable shopping, other services in the area, connections to the library very close by, and, and other pieces. So we're excited about it and would be um, happy to accept any questions from you at this time. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, are there any questions for the applicant? I'm not seeing any, thank you. All right, now we'll move on to the, the rest of the public hearing. So if you would like to come forward, state your name and neighborhood for the record, and you have two minutes. I am uh, David Caniff of uh, 2840 27th Avenue South. Uh, I lived in Minneapolis, I mean, at this location for 35 years, and um, this neighborhood has had to suffer through the George Floyd riots. I had to save my house from being burned down and uh, with my garden hose. And many neighbors have already left the area here. And this area already has many, many empty lots. And the reputation of this area is very poor right now. And uh, putting um, this type of a development in there will greatly hinder any building in this area. And uh, we have uh, a reputation for this area here, could be 
made like it was before, made whole again, instead of putting this type of housing in this area with all these uh, code variances and all this there, it's, just, it's, it's gonna be a big detriment to um, any further development around this area. And um, these, these, my neighbors already had to suffer through homeless people living right in the same spot here through the whole winter. And uh, some of them are here. And um, there's many children on this block. There's many children. There's three preschool children in my house. There is, I, I took a picture before I came here. There's four or five children in the lot across, right across the street from there. There's three children right there that are right there in the neighborhood there. And, and, uh, and I worry about their um, safety. I worry very much about their safety. And um, uh, it's, it's a bad idea. I think it should be put in a spot that has less other types of housing, especially young families and stuff like that there. And um, I... Uh, Thank you. Wrap up your comments, please. I only have this much time. Yeah. I could keep going on, but... <laughs> Thank you. But uh, I, I believe that I have my neighbors here. Yep. Whoever's also. next can come forward and um, state your name and, and this area could be more like uptown if you wanted it to be. If you want to Thank put you. a torpedo in it, do this. Okay. Hello. My name is James Schultz. I'm the owner of 2814 and 2816 27th Avenue South. Um, <clears throat> Now, I had some really good renters for 16 years on the first floor. They actually moved because of this going on. Um, not that I'm against 100%. This could be a great thing. The problem that we're having right now is it's a total mess. It's become a dump yard now. Now, we were promised that the dumpster was going to come in there. We were going to clean it up. Nothing's happened. It's still exactly the same. So the trust really gets kind of stabbed a little bit. When somebody tells you they're going to do something and they don't do it, um, like the old saying, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, shame on I mean, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. So what, the only thing I can say is that there has to be some trust built up here. If that doesn't come, this will never make it. It will not make it in the neighborhood. And, I'm, and just like the gentleman was saying, there's eight or nine young little Somali girls at the corner right by the lot. They say hi to us every day when we go by, they call us by name. Um, it's, it was, it's a great neighborhood, but again, there has to be some trust because it's not gonna work if we don't get something going on, okay? Um, I even took pictures of piles of needles over there. Um, it's, yes, it's bad. Last night we had a new, a new um, tenant move in over there, so I went to confront him and ask him what he's doing there, and he told me to mind my own effing business. So it's not like it's a polite way of saying this, but it, in everybody's house, I've owned my house now for almost 20 years. I absolutely love it. Um, but I'm scared to put a renter in again now because I don't know what's going to happen. So where do you start from here? We just bite our lip and say, okay. Uh, it, it, everybody has to stand up and say something. And I know these gentlemen back here probably want to say something too because they're right across the alley from me. So I'll let them take a couple seconds. Thank you. If anyone else would like to come forward, you can do so now. Um, they were, what they were, speak for them for a second on um, their English is a little broken but they would just like to say they have their children right across that lot and we watch pickup trucks come in and dump stuff off every night they have cameras taking pictures of them and we go to confront them they make what thank you they want me to speak for them you've already spoken is there anyone who hasn't spoken who would like to come to the podium is there anybody here that can translate Spanish? so that is a service, but we need advance notice in order, unless someone okay. would like to volunteer. Okay. Would you like to, Commissioner Alper? All right, Commissioner Alper would translate for you if you would like to. Voy a hacer el intento. Yo les conozco. Nos conocimos el día después del fuego. Okay. Sí, yo, eh, viven en, en la calle 27, ¿no? O 20, eh, al otro lado es una casa azul, sí, más o correcto. menos, con muchas plantas. Sí. Al lado del lugar de dominos. Sí. Ok. Ya, yeah, uh, Bueno, uh, nosotros vivimos ahí desde hace como 
aproximadamente 10 años atrás. So they've, they've, he's, he's lived there for the last 10 years, more or less? Uh, nosotros pues, es, estamos, uh, uh, nos gusta vivir allá. We like to live there. Eh, no queremos mover, movernos de ahí. We, we don't want to move. Eh, nosotros tenemos hijos que ya se adaptaron a escuelas que están cerca del área. We, we have kids who've already um, adapted to schools in the area. Uh, y ahora nos preocupa la noticia de que uh, por el nuevo proyecto que se viene. Uh, we're Ecuador, worried about the new project that's coming in here. Porque tenemos, como digo, tenemos niños. Because we have kids. Y también los vecinos que están a la casa de lado, ellos también tienen niños. And, and because our, our neighbors who live next door also have kids. Y nos, nos preocupa que en el futuro pueda haber uh, problemas. And when we're worried that there could be problems. Que no queremos estar lidiando de estar llamando al 911. And we don't want to be calling 911. Uh, todos los días. Uh, every day. Ahora mismo hay una situación que entre todos los vecinos que vivimos en el área nos tenemos que cuidar al uno al otro porque vemos personas en la noche. Um, right now we have a um, kind of a, a community with our neighbors. Um, we take care of each other at night. Entonces pienso que con este nuevo proyecto va a ser más difícil. And we think that with this project it's going to be more difficult. Estar uh, you know, en paz viviendo en el área. Oh, we, right now we're living in, in peace in this area. Okay. Sí, eso es todo lo que tengo que decir. Gracias. Oh, no escuché. No, no escuché. Eso es todo lo que tengo que decir. Gracias. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? Uh, before I close the public hearing. All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing for this item. Commissioners, is there any discussion? Or would anyone like to make a motion? Commissioner Conley. Thank you, I actually have a question for the applicant now that I've heard some public comment. So um, there, there's, a, there's some truth to the fact that trust is really important in this community, um, uh, especially this part of South Minneapolis. And so I always wonder sometimes how developers come to community with project ideas before they come to the planning commission or visit me uh, <laughs> to talk about. I know that Agate has a really strong history of housing people. So can you talk to me a little bit about how you're establishing trust in the community? Because you and I know that this type of housing actually reduces crime. It makes neighborhoods safer. It increases property values. It's safe for kids, right? But you have to be able to explain that to the neighborhood and talk about how that works. So have, have there been neighborhood meetings? Have there been, uh, you know, flyers sent to go around the neighborhood? Like, talk to me a little bit about how you've engaged with the residents, please. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Chair Olson, Commissioner Conley. We um, did work with the neighborhood group to do um, engagement over the last couple of months. We held um, two neighborhood uh, feedback sessions um, that were uh, pretty well attended. We held one on Zoom uh, for people for convenience. We held one in person. Um, in the area and uh, tried to host and field questions. We did, we did send out informational flyers to the whole surrounding community. We did a mailing of them. Please be quiet. Uh, and, um, and, and did engage with the, the neighborhood group um, to do that. Um, we purchased this property in, in January and, um, and early on in the uh, process we did um, have a small encampment that was there and we worked uh, diligently every single day with uh, um, with our street outreach team and we did manage to find and, and clear the encampment on our own without any intervention. Uh, we found housing for the majority of folks there and moved them on. We have secured the area now with the fence and, and are in the process of um, you know the post winter cleanup and everything but um, I certainly uh, would be happy to, to do some more deeper engagement with the neighbors. Um, clearly, we want to be a good neighbor. Um, we do know that there are, uh, you know, they spoke of needles in the alley and those things. Our feeling is that by having a 24-hour presence there, um, that we can prevent some of those uh, issues from happening that are going on now without a presence of a building there. 
Uh, we will have 24-hour staff on site for both uh, components of the housing portion and in the shelter portion. We have a front desk person that will be there screening. Um, uh, and the, the space itself was really designed with the neighborhood in mind. We put the social area back toward uh, the back of the building. We provided some um, entrance areas and benches and things for people to hang out on the front area, but a much smaller area for people to congregate out front to try to keep some of that in a, in a space that was designed for that. Um, you know, there'll be landscaped areas, green space behind there. Um, so we really tried to address the neighborhood concerns and issues, um, but I'm happy to reach back out to the neighborhood again to do deeper engagement as we move forward. I certainly appreciate that, if I may, just to follow up that um, it may be single room occupancy is relatively new, but it's something that the city of Minneapolis has embraced. It's something that Hennepin County has embraced. These are people who are working, who, uh, right, who, who are, have housing that is affordable to them based on their income. And I think that's a misconception that a lot of people don't just put together. So I certainly appreciate the way that you've engaged uh, the neighborhood. Um, it's lo looking at it. It certainly looks like a great addition um, to, as opposed to what's there right now. And so maybe uh, deeper engagement as things continue to go up would be a, not such a bad idea. Yeah, Chair Olson, uh, Commissioner Conley, if I could. So this, the, the housing units really are not meant to be transitional units. They are meant to be folks who are living there um, and provided services and support for, for their longevity. Um, there's no, um, time limit on how long folks can live there, and we're really hoping that this can be a place that can become community for them as well um, as part of the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Marwa, and then Meyer, and then Alper. Yeah, hi, my question is for the applicant as well. Um, you know, I think this is a great project when it comes to fruition. In the interim, it sounds like there's a lot of site issues when it comes to dumping and needles and whatnot, what are you all doing currently to address kind of current site conditions and what's happening there? And what could you guys maybe be doing better for the current neighborhood? I can speak to that a little bit. My name is Michelle Perrin. I'm the Director of Outreach and Shelter with Agate Housing and Services. And currently our street outreach team is making um, or has been making uh, regular um, rounds to the location and also responding to um, neighbor um, reports of people living or um, utilizing that space. And so, and I'm happy to share our contact information with any residents and I can do that here um, as well so that um, we can be made aware because we know that that is something that can change daily and sometimes multiple times throughout the day. Um, and so we're happy to respond uh, to those specific concerns on an ongoing basis um, as they arise. And we are currently in the process of um, addressing the uh, accumulation of litter that did accumulate over the winter with folks that were living there. Um, and so that is in process. And um, yeah, any other questions about that? Yeah, I mean, I think, could you guys, I don't know, fencing, dumpster, some, it sounds like there's, this is a, an issue that's there, and I know mm -hmm. how long development can really take to break ground, and I, you know, I just think some good neighborly, right. you know, so, yeah, so there is currently fencing right around now. the okay. entirety of the property, um, and we will um, look into getting like garbage receptacles on site with our developer and we can commit to doing um, routine like intentional um, outreach to that location to check on it on, an, on a routine basis for sure. Is there safe, uh, this is maybe a question for staff, is there some kind of safe needle receptacle bins that exist that communities put out now? I mean, I've heard this is an issue in many neighborhoods I don't know if that's something that exists. That so is this going to be a drug house then, or what? No, no, I'm just talking about for current, for it being a vacant lot right now, where there's dumping happening. How, how you can make sure that those are just not in the street. Sir, the public a, hearing no. is closed. From a land use planning perspective, I'm not 
aware of anything. Unfortunately, that's not really in our wheelhouse. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, there were some receptacles um, that went up to different community locations um, a while back, and I don't know, like, we were made aware of them, but there's nothing that, like, we can place there. Um, we do provide uh, recept safe receptacles for folks um, who need them uh, to dispose of their, like, needles safely. Um, but as far as like having a receptacle on site, we would have to look into the feasibility of that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Commissioner Meyer. Thank you. Um, just wanted to clarify. So, so it's half housing units, 23 units, and you can say they're permanently, but then 22 of them are single room occupancy and there's a time limit on, on those, right? correct? No? The time limit is on the emergency shelter use, not the oh, single okay. room occupancy. So the, okay, I, I, I did misread that then. So the single room occupancy are, are long-term as well? Correct. Oh, okay. Sorry, no, right. All right, um, I'll let the last commenter speak and then I'll have a motion after that. Okay, Commissioner Alper. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to say that I, I lived near here for a long time. I lived at 2828 28th Avenue South. Um, this is my neighborhood, too, even though I live a few blocks away now. And I see a great need on a daily basis um, for increased options for housing. So I, um, I'm looking forward to this project. And I, I mean, I hear the neighbors, too, because this, this neighborhood especially has been could use a little love, frankly, has been hard hit in the last few years. Um, so I, I hope uh, that, you know, this thread will connect you all and will keep the momentum going towards a um, better future for the long-term neighbors in this neighborhood and the, the future neighbors who are coming into. I did want to mention I noticed a code of conduct in the staff report, um, and maybe that's something that can be shared with neighbors as well. Commissioner Meyer. So I, I support the staff recommendation on this. I think it's really important to provide this type of housing. Um, as Commissioner Conley mentioned, you know, the city has embraced single room occupancy. Um, and I think it's much better for people to be housed than to be on the street. So I, I, I think this is um, something that we want to encourage. I did just want to note um, for the variance, um, I mean, this will be the third time I mentioned concern about eliminating pedestrian overlay districts because we're citing the pedestrian overlay district to justify um, this variance. It's not the only reason um, to justify the variance, but uh, it does complement it. And uh, that gives me concern because if this had come um, a few weeks later, then that wouldn't, you know, after the city council um, passes the, the changes, um, that would no longer be applicable. Um, so it, it, it seems to me like maybe we should um, revisit the setback requirements um, in order to make them more, more pedestrian friendly in the future. Um, but with that note, um, I would move to approve items A, B, C, and D uh, consistent with staff recommendations and the stated conditions, um, including uh, the revised um, completion date of May 22nd, 2025. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Commissioner Alper. Aye. Baxley. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Conley. Aye. Koski. Aye. Marwa. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Olson. Aye. That's eight yeas and zero nays. All right, that motion passes. That was our last discussion item for the evening. Um, are there any announcements from staff? Yes, thank you. Um, so it's been a little while, a few cycles, since the land use rezoning study was in front of the commission, but it did just go to the biz committee of the city council last week. And I know there were a series of amendments that came out of the planning commission. Um, so I just wanted to touch on those. I did send out the actions and the entire LIMS file from the biz committee meeting. But just to summarize here, um, so there was an amendment brought forward by Commissioner Marwa related to a 
I'll just summarize because it touched many chapters, but metalworking related to arts uses that was adopted as part of the biz committee's recommendation to the full council, as was the amendment brought forward by Commissioner Meyer related to the size of grocery stores to increase them to 20,000 square feet. So that was also adopted as part of the biz committee's recommendation to the city council. Um, there was another amendment that was brought forward by Marwa and Baxley that I believe they were calling the corner store amendment, but related to the limited commercial uses. That amendment was not adopted as part of the biz committee's recommendation on the land use rezoning study, but it was passed as part of a legislative directive, basically directing staff to study that and bring back recommendations in 2024. So that's something that we'll get another look at. And what's the next one? Um, Kimberly, can I ask you a question on that? Yes. Um, so I followed from afar poorly, I'm guessing, on what happened with that. And I'm wondering, I'm, I'm thinking that in order for that to move forward, we need a comprehensive plan amendment. Is that your understanding? Potentially, yes. That's, that's part of the legislative directive um, to staff. Is there any, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm just trying to understand full options available to the commission, but is there an opportunity for us to uh, multi, what's the word I'm thinking? Dual path this, Parallel where like path. we work on a comprehensive plan amendment, because I know that's laborious while the legislative directive is happening, or do we wait for the legislative directive before we move into the possibility of a comprehensive plan amendment? I think we would wait for the legislative directive, and of course, this is um, my daughter's pediatrician that I've been waiting to call me all day. Um, and then that. there's a letter that I sent you, and that's all I have. <laughs> all right. Commissioner Klosky? Thank you, uh, Chair Olson. So I guess I, I have a question about, um, but I don't think she's not here now to answer that about the timing. I did not follow that piece of it though, uh, that there was a legislative directive in 2024. So that's that's 12 months. I don't know what did, did they was there a specific date that they gave? It was, yeah, it was late 2024. I think it was like October or something. So and okay, that was so, something I was going to nudge on the staff so, as well to go a little sooner than that. Yeah, I think that perhaps that when we have staff here, we can reconnect. Okay. and talk to them about, to your point, either a parallel path or moving that timing up. Uh, I, I'm unclear around the, the reasoning of that late date in 2024. Sure. Great. Okay. Um, Commissioner Albert, did you have something? No. Okay. Um, well, I think that since we don't have any <laughs> staff, um, is there anything else before we adjourn? Go cite the session. Yeah, at the legislature. Is this coming to us again? Is it not? Is it? Maybe. Um, I think unless the um, application has been withdrawn, we would still see it back um, to the date we continued it to, but that would be on the city to choose to do that. So, gotcha. Thank you. All right. Anything else? If not, and without objection, I'll declare this meeting adjourned. Our next meeting will be Monday, June 12th, and next Committee of the Whole will be Thursday, May 25th. or it can be taken up by the city council and mayor. If the proposal is referred to voters, it will show up as a question on the ballot and the voters get to decide. Otherwise, the mayor and 